Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Come on, let's make that an action. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and magnify his name. Last time I checked, I don't have an option. I got to praise him for all the things he's done. Simply just for waking me up this morning. Simply just for allowing activities in my limbs. Simply just allowing me to breathe through my lungs. I have a reason and no choice but to praise his name. Hallelujah. This is Youth Sunday. We're excited to see everybody here. Amen. Everybody's young at heart. Hallelujah. Feel free to jump up and down, wave your hands, give God praise, even on the teleconference and Facebook. If nobody can see you, that's all right. You're doing it for God anyway. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship reads this. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have a testimony? I got a testimony to share to you that you can pass down from one generation to another that he's good and great is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I come to praise the Lord. Let us pray. This is our intercessory moment. We have many who are on the prayer list. And we ask that you pray along with me. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day once again, God. We thank you for allowing us to come into this place. We don't take it for granted, God, because somebody didn't get this opportunity. And many still don't have this opportunity to safely make it into a building to praise your name. God, we thank you for waking us up just again because somebody didn't wake up. But God, we thank you. God, thank you for allowing us to walk to our cars, to wheel to our car. However, we got there. We might need some help, but Lord, we still thank you. God, we thank you for our jobs. We thank you for some source of income. God, we thank you for supplying our needs. Even though it may look like we're down and out and it looks like nobody's there, it looks like no money's coming in, but every time you show up, and God, we thank you. God, we honor you and we praise your name. God, now we have some people who are on our list who aren't feeling so well, God. They're going through some long-term sicknesses, God, but we know that you are with them even now. God, continue to surround them with your Holy Spirit. Continue to give them messages, God, to allow them to know that it's going to be all right and you are still a healer. You're still in the healing business. God, some are not sure about their lives, God, what we ask that you send the Holy Spirit uh, to them right now to help them realize that they are important and that they mean something to somebody. Though somebody may say something against you, but God, we understand that what your word says, we are your children. God, you hold us up. God, you hold it to a higher esteem. God, you walk with us. You talk with us. God, you be with us. Only thing we have to do is pray and pull our burdens on you, and you will take care of it. God, we thank you for being the burden bearer. We thank you for being the heavy load sharer. We thank you for being a will in the middle of a will, doing the impossible. God, we pray that cancer will dry up even now. God, and we're declaring negative tests right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that people will be healed, minds will be restored, things will be worked out, financial incomes will become normal, God, bank accounts become normal, God, we thank you for it now. We pray for our youth even now, God, as they're going to and fro to school, walking on campus, some are unsure, but God, we understand you're the great protector, that you protect us from seen dangers and unseen dangers. God, we thank you for your protection. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, comforting Holy Spirit that comes with us when we lose a loved one. God, some of us don't feel like we can make it without it. But God, you give us sweet memories to hold on to. And we thank you for that. God, we just come with a heart of thanksgiving. Because we dare not take anything for granted for what you've done. Lord, we thank you for hearing our cry. We thank you for inclining your ear to us and granting us peace. God, we give you all of us. And we love you, we praise you, and we magnify your name. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Amen.
Good morning, Oak Grove family and friends. We're so glad that you've connected with us, the Grove Without Walls, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. Franklin D. Watkins. If you are attending, listening, or watching us for the first time, we would like to extend a warm welcome to you. Whether you're watching us on Facebook Live, listening on the teleconference line, or attending in person, we would like to thank you for joining us. We appreciate each one of you. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience with us today. Now, it is time for our weekly announcements. Please mark your calendars for the events that will resume in September. Intercessory prayer on September 4th at 7 a.m. And on that same date, Sunday school will resume at 7 p.m. Intercessory prayer meeting on Tuesday, September 7th at 7 p.m. Men's prayer and Bible study on Monday, September 20th at 7 p.m. Trustee meeting will be on Thursday, September 16th at 6.30 p.m. Also on the 16th, the men will rehearse at 7 p.m. On Saturday, September 18th, the joint board will meet at 9 a.m. and a corporate church meeting will follow at 10. On Wednesday, September 8th, we will resume our Wednesday night Bible study with our Christian Education Fall Session entitled Experiencing God. These classes will be held each Wednesday through December 8th at 7 p.m. in person in the sanctuary, but it will also be available on Facebook Live, Zoom, and Zoom teleconference. Mask and social distancing guidelines will be adhered. Please refer to the newsletter or announcement tab on the website for the dial-in information. Please continue to send your prayer requests to the church office during our sabbatical. May God bless and strengthen you during your personal time with him. The Grief Share Fall Session will begin in the Peace Chapel on Saturday, September 4th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and it will continue for 13 weeks. All sessions will be in person. Grief Share is a Bible-based Christ-centered ministry that helps people who are grieving the loss of a loved one. You can register at griefshare.org. Use zip code 28075. A warm welcome awaits you at Grief Share. Ladies, mark your calendars for Women's Day, which will be held on Sunday, September 12th at 10 a.m. The attire will be all black with pearl accessories. Choir rehearsal times, September 9th at 7 p.m. and on September 11th, time to be determined. Oak Grove is looking to hire a musician. The primary responsibilities are to play keyboard and organ, provide music for worship service, and lift up the name of Jesus in praise, music, and song. If you are interested or know someone who is, please contact the church office for a job description and more information. There will be a mandatory meeting for all members of the music ministry, which includes the Unity, Men's, Youth, and Hymn Choirs on September 23rd at 7 p.m. Those that are interested in joining the music ministry are welcome to join us as well. If you are unable to attend, please contact Brian Williams or the church office. If you will be attending college this school year, please fill out a college student information form. Parents, if your child is already left for school, please fill out the form for them. The form can be picked up from the church office or it can be mailed or emailed by request. Please return the form by September 19th. The College Care Ministry will be sending out care packages. This ends the announcements. Have a blessed, safe, and productive week. Good morning, Oak Grove family and friends. I think we have a couple of announcements. The first announcement is we have two car keys. If you're missing car keys, um, they've been here for a little while, but if you're missing car keys, they're on the greeters table. If you want to check and see if they're yours, uh, you can pick them up there. And I believe the other announcement is grief share for the weekly classes will be in the classroom versus in the Peace Chapel. So those are just a couple of announcements. And then we will go to the Lord in prayer for offertory prayer. If everybody will stand, and if you have your offerings in your hand, we will go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you 
with grateful and humble hearts. We come thanking you for all your many blessings. We come thanking you for those that are able to give this morning, those that have gave throughout the week, those will continue to give, Heavenly Father. We also ask you to bless those that have not to give right now, but we know that you are still blessing them because you look at our hearts, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you just ask us to give a 10% of what you have given us, Heavenly Father. But we know that that 10% will go a long ways, Heavenly Father. So we thank you and we bless you. We ask you to bless us so mightily, Heavenly Father. We ask you to keep us in your loving care, Heavenly Father. We say a special prayer for the, the people that are in the line or in the track of the storm, the, the hurricane that's coming, Heavenly Father. Just bless them in a mighty and special way. We ask that you bless those that uh, uh, were experienced the earthquake in Haiti, Heavenly Father. We ask that you just keep them in your loving care. Bless the families that have lost loved ones. Heavenly Father, bless the families of the soldiers that uh, passed this past week. Just continue to bless us, Heavenly Father, and continue to wrap your loving arms around us. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you give the officers of Oak Grove Baptist Church the wisdom and the knowledge to use the offerings and the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in a way of upbuilding your kingdom down here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. We will, have, we will give our offerings uh, in sections. We have section one and section three. But if everyone will turn to the middle of the aisle, we will start with sections one and sections three. And, and the usher in the back will let you know and you exit from the rear to come up. And then after section one and section three, we will do section uh, two and four. Again, you'll see a basket on the communion table for Haiti. Uh, we are collecting last week and this week to uh, bless those that are in need. Thank you.
opportunity to come into this house to give him the praise and that's for the folks who have come even online hello if you came to Facebook he's still worthy to give you praise to praise to God if you're on the phone hallelujah if he's worthy to be praised and right now I ask that if you're on the line in any kind of way in the house, you can wave your hand. If you're on Facebook, you can click share and to tell somebody else to come on because we're about to have church right now. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes we got to give him the praise. This morning, this morning, this morning, I want to give honor to God. He's the head of my life. He gives me the breath I breathe and, and every movement of my body. The fact that I can see you with my eyes. The fact that I can hear you with my ears. The fact that I am still who I am is not of my own. Hallelujah. Oh, but not only to God do I give all the glory. I thank our own pastor, Reverend Dr. Franklin D. Watkins. Because he's trusting me right now in his pulpit to bring a word to you and God has a word just for you but you know I gotta I gotta tell y'all a little something something I'm gonna ask brother Breon hang in there with me for a minute amen because you know I walked through some valleys but yet and still I know who is the tea who's the honey in my tea I'm telling you right now that he's my cream and my coffee and then sometimes we don't even have either of those two. But you know what? Even when it's hot, he's there. When it's cold, he's there. When I'm feeling down and out and don't know how to hear what God is saying, he's still there. I share with you my own husband. I wanted to call him Deacon, but his brother Johnny Clements. He's in the rear of the church, but to God be all the glory. Because let me tell you, God had to do a major work in me for him to deal with me. Hey, hallelujah. But you know God prepared him as he has prepared each of you for where you are in your life. Where you are, even as you sit there and wonder, can I click, can I tag, and can I share? Can I tell somebody else about Jesus as I go about loving God and honoring God for who he is? When I look at the news today and I see all that's going on in Haiti with that earthquake, but then God showed himself out. And you know only some things are done because God is allowing it. The storm that rises up and we know we can have peace in the midst of storms. And so we look at then the storm that's rising up. Hurricane Ida. 
she comes, but we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And we are praying right now in our hearts that no hurt, harm, or danger would come our way. You said, is she going to pray or is she going to preach? But I'm telling you, God is sensitizing his people to what's going on in the world. Even when we look at COVID, the pandemic, we got high blood pressure, low blood pressure. We got diabetes. We got all kinds of stuff. Do I wear a mask or not wear a mask? Should I take my, let my children go to school or not go to school? What are they doing? Are they making decisions with or without us? When you got drones making attacks in other countries, is this what God would have be done? But God is still God. He is our refuge. He's our hiding place. And I'm going to ask you a question right now. Do you know why? Do you know why? I, 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 I got to ask that question. I'm going to hear a lot of that today. Why? But pray with me, most gracious and everlasting Father. It's a news break to your people right now. Our pastor told us last week to wake up. It's a voice calling in the wilderness right now, Lord God, that we will wake up and hear you and hear you alone and that we will do those things that you have called us to do, that we will not look to our left nor to our right, but we'll look up unto you, Lord God, that as this word comes forth, Lord God, we ask for a fresh anointing to each ear that shall hear and give us a heart to do your will. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to use a couple of scriptures this morning. I want to start off with Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, verses four through nine, and I shall read for your hearing. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, verses four through nine. And that scripture is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home. And when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And while you're standing, let me just take you to the second scripture. That's Luke, the fifth chapter starting at verse 1 through 11, and that will be in the New Living Translation. If you've got strength in your legs, hey, glory to God, I ask that you would look up. I think the scripture should be above us. And if you're at home and you're scrambling a little bit, I did say Luke, yes, Luke, the fifth chapter, starting at verse 1 through 11, and it reads... One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were filled, were so full of fish, they began to tear. Yeah, 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 yeah. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. 
Mm -hmm. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Amen. May the Lord bless his word, as it says, and as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Ask me why. Why? Ask me why. I, I, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes, okay? I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes. But you know what? I got to go back to this word and think about this thing for a minute because, you know, did you see what Simon did? There he was out there working day all night long. He was mighty, mighty, mighty tired. And there were no fish in his nets. Uh -huh. and, 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 you know, it must be kind of frustrating. And, and for the fishermen who are in this house, those people who know what it's like to go fishing all night long. I can turn it around and say all day long. Either way I look at it, if you didn't catch anything after being all long, you know what I'm talking about? That whole window. Anybody here ever been fishing and you fished and fished and fished and didn't catch anything? Huh? You didn't catch anything. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, 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 and let me tell you about this. It can be kind of frustrating, right? I can tell you the story about a man who went fishing and, and he went fishing at night and he wasn't catching anything and, and something came up and they were on a little boat, not too little, but a boat. And the boat got caught in the sand. And, and it just so happens the person who went fishing called me and said, uh, wife, wife, you got to call somebody to tow this boat. Now, I didn't know they had special things to tow boats, but he still didn't catch any fish. And I'm here to tell you right now, but yes, we get the boat towed, towed and all of that kind of stuff. It was all straightened out, but, 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 but can you imagine Simon? He had been out there fishing all oh, night long. It's just like a waitress who's been out there working all day long. Ask me why. Why? I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. Okay. Because if you've been out there for a long, long time, at, like Simon had been, and, and here come, and I want to make it easy because, you know, I'm going to make this real easy for all of us, you know. Here, here, here's Simon out there. And, and he hears that voice. Now, I want to ask you, if you heard this voice from the Lord speaking to you, would you know the voice of God? And, and there was that man that looked like Jesus that we knew about, okay? And Jesus comes sauntering over saying, listen, my brother, I know you're washing your nets. That's where they catch the fish in at that time frame. But I want you to get back in your boat. In the deep. Now, you know, when you go fishing out there, you can go a long ways out in the water before you cast your net, right? So here he is out there, and he goes out, and he goes out and casts his net. And, 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 and here's Jesus talking about him going back out there one more time. And he thinks to himself, shall I do this? And I want to ask you to ask me why, but I'm not. Because you start thinking about that thing. I've been out here all night long, and here you're going to tell me to go back out there one more time. And you're going to ask me uh, what I should be thinking. And, and, and I want to tell you the short story is I'm thinking to myself, you must not have ever been fishing before. You know, there's some things that should not come past our lips, right? But you're thinking. You're thinking, I am tired. I've been out here all night long, and I did not get my regular rest at night. Huh? Situations in our lives have postured us where we've been up all night long toiling and trying to figure out what to do when God speaks to our hearts and says, 
it's a new day. And if it's a new day, what shall I do? And, 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 but I want you to know that that scripture we just read, and did you pay attention to it when you were reading it? Simon was thinking, he said, okay. Because this is Jesus mm -hmm, of Nazareth. I'm going to do what he said to. So Simon turns to Jesus and said, because you, you, Jesus, have said so, I'm going to get back in my book and do this. So he changed the words. He didn't say, because I said so, because you said so. He go, he's going to go back out there. And w when he went out into the deep, what did he catch? I can't hear you. Fish. But that was because of one or two things. That was because he trusted, right? You ever fa had faith that you can't see? Huh? Faith that you can't see. But I want to say faith you don't understand. I don't understand how I've been out there all night long fishing and I don't have any fish. I don't understand how I could go to school and remote learning and, and sit in front of my computer at the house when my mama is over there almost armed and, and ready for battle with me. And I'm trying my best to do what I can, but I can't seem to learn at all. Uh, and it's not about whether you understand it. And I'm talking not only to, to young people or little people. I'm talking about grown people, too. You know me. You go to work, and you have worked real hard, and, and you see somebody else get a promotion, and you think you are due a promotion, but your net is coming up empty. Uh, anybody net came up empty? You worked all your life, and you retired, and you're looking at your net and wondering, how can this be? That I've got to live off of, uh, 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 I can't even show you what it looks like, but if you can think about it for a minute with me. When I did my little bit of research, and I saw how much of Social Security, you know, that I had invested in for how many years, just like being all night. And I'm wondering... Dare I say it out loud, but I will say, God, I don't understand. I don't understand how I'm going to live off of 25%. I don't understand how everything is going to work. But I promise you right now, as I speak to you, according to Malachi, it tells you that if you will give God a dime out of every dollar, he will take your little and make it much. He will take your little and make it much. Now, ask me why. I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. Because you got to have faith. And you see, faith is obedience when you don't understand. Anybody here ever had to have faith when you don't understand? When you don't understand what God is trying to tell you to do, even when you're sitting at the house at the kitchen table doing your homework as a child, and they're telling you, you got to take geometry. Well, what benefit is that going to be in my life? Huh? Well, what, oh, when I cut a pie. When I cut a pie, excuse me, I, I want to say it. What about this one? Let me tell you an easy one. The ones that I get concerned about where I just don't understand. And this is where I don't understand as a child. This is where I don't understand as a millennial. This is where I don't understand as a boomer. The Bible says that God says for us. To love your enemies. Now, I want to ask you one more time. Ask me why. I'm going to tell you in a few minutes, okay? Because why would God want you to love your enemies? People who are treating you, mistreating you, whatever, saying things all manner of evil to you. And he says, love your enemies. Can you go out there and cast your net into the deep? When you can't love those who you see, but you tell me you love the Lord our God? Huh? Uh, now, wait a minute. Let me try another one on you. Not only does he want me to love my enemies, he wants me to forgive people 
who have hurt me. Forgive people who have hurt me. Bless them. Hello, hello. Why? I'm going to tell you in a few minutes, okay? You know, none of that is easy, or can I put it like this? That ain't easy. All right, now I'm going to change things a little bit because I want the people who are on Facebook especially to understand that I understand that I can't hear them. So you need to put down why in your comments. Why? Everybody, each person put why. That gives me a feeling of whether or not you're listening to what we're trying to share. The fact is that there are many commands in the Bible that we seem to find difficult and unreasonable, unrealistic, unachievable, even impossible. But when God says things like, uh, you should save sex for marriage, ask me why. I'm going to definitely tell you that one a little bit, okay? It's not denial that he's, tell he's trying to do to you. He's sharing with you that he loves you unconditionally. He's got a plan for your life. Now, millennials, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, listen carefully. Because we are the example set. Okay, I'm a boomer. All right, but anyway, millennials and boomers, remember Gen X, Gen Z are watching us. We are the example setters. Well, glory to God. Will you obey? Should I obey? Why should I obey? When should I obey? Only when I'm at church should I obey? Uh, or let me just go on to tell you, should I obey just because the Bible said so? Are you studying the word and hiding in your heart that you might not sin against God? There in everything God has told you to do, you're going to try to do it, right? And when you try to do it and somebody asked you why, like your child, you ever been at home when you were with your children and you were rearing them and the children asked, turned to you and said, why? Hey, kids, I'm going to ask you, have you ever thought about why? Why is your mother, why is your father telling you to do certain things? Why? Why should I do my homework? Why should I go to school every day? Why should I go to bed on time? Why? 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 But remember, we're going to do two things now. Well, number one was faith is obedience when you don't understand. Okay? The second one we're going to deal with is that faith is believing when you don't even see it. You got that, right? So even when you can't do that geometry... And, and you're studying geometry just to cut up a pie. Hello. When you're sitting at the table doing all your homework, when you are getting up early in the morning to go to work, but you're getting up early so you can have that personal devotion time with the Lord. Because we have learned that we have to study the Word. We have learned that we must pray. We have learned that... Even as we start hiding the word in our hearts, we won't sin against God. And if we don't sin against God, we shall be, what? Blessed. Now, now I want to ask you, do you really believe what you just said? Do you believe that children should do what their parents tell them to do without an explanation? It's mighty quiet in the house, so I'll talk to Facebook people, <laughs> Okay, Facebook people, let me tell you something about doing what your parents say do. Number one reason to do what your parents tell you to do. Hello. Do what your parents say do because the Bible said so. Now, what does Simon just tell us? Because God said so, I will move out into the deep, right? And if I move out into the deep and cast my net not only did Simon fill his net, he called for his buddies, and his buddies fill theirs as well. So my question would be then, if I were to obey God, learning geometry, all the theorems in the world, and you know, I have to throw a side note, you know, our pastor likes numbers, you guys, okay, bless God. And, 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 and you, you got to understand that God has given each and every one of us a passion, mm -hmm, a passion for something. Some people can cook very well. And as you cook, and I'll never forget, my sister-in-law turned to me and said, this is one pound cake. You will get 32 slices of cake out that cake. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do that. 
And she told me, yes, you do. Because if you think about math, if you think about how you can slice that cake to get the number of slices she wanted, she wanted you to just taste the cake. She didn't want you to waste the cake. Now, you know, no, no, some of us sometimes like to waste stuff. But I'm here to tell you that when God gives us who are parents authority to do certain things according to his word, we have to obey. Now, that obedience is a choice. And that obedience is not just for Gen X, Gen Z, millennials, for um, boomers. The Bible has called us to hide the word in our hearts that we might not sin against him. And we have to come up with a plan to do that. That when we cast our net in the deep, we will get a return. And while I don't usually do this kind of thing, I do want to mention to you that I mention a dime out of a dollar. Do you trust God with one dime out of your dollar? One dime. One dime. And why do I talk about a dime? Because that's 10%. That's tithing. But there are many other things in our lives that we won't give him a little bit that he might bless us. Now, 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 and we do, we want to start doing things, and I know you do. I can tell by the way you look. I can tell because folks who are on Facebook are typing in, why? Okay, because people here in, in, here in the congregation right now may not be saying why out loud, but they're saying to themselves, why? Why am I hearing this? Be mindful of what God tells you to do. Be mindful where God calls you into a room or have something in your hearing that you should obey. Because obedience is better than what? Okay, Facebook, teleconference, they told me, than sacrifice. So if the governors or whomever is giving, FEMA is giving directives to the folks who are in the way of the storm, I want to believe that God has given them the wisdom to make decisions. I don't understand it. I don't see it. But I'm going to be obedient to the word of God. Lord, I'm on my knees right now. What shall I do? When we saw the basket in front here a little earlier, what can I do? Can I give that others might have? Because there are some folks right now who not only are they concerned because they had to flee with whatever they had in their hands or in their bag or whatever they could grab. There are some who are concerned about whether or not they'll be able to feed the children. Will my mama or my grandmother or, you know, the age be able to move forward? Are you blessed to be a blessing? It's okay to make your choice. And then you know what? Let me just tell y'all this so y'all can have a good time with me, okay? Because I'm so excited I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm so excited because, let me tell you something. They told me there's something going on in society today that young people are doing things called a crate challenge. Yeah, 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 a crate challenge. Can you imagine a crate? Now, I want you to imagine that this is a crate. Now, how did I find out about a crate? My daughter, and, and she's a millennial, okay? She's not a, a Gen X person, but she's a, 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 a millennial. And, and she says, Mom, do you know what they're doing now? And she sent me links to things that are on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, that showed me what people are doing. Now, now, some of us who are in the house right now and or who may be looking at these boxes and wondering, I was wondering too, what in the world could a crate challenge be? Is it, you know, because, now look, this was before my day where they used to put the milk in the crate and put the crate by the door and people go get the milk every day. That was, that was my mama, grandma, or whatever, but not me. Okay, so if you would imagine young folk with your mm, sanctified mind, 
that these are crates. Okay? And guess what they're doing with the crates, y'all? Don't y'all make me hurt myself. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I got to show you what the crates do. Now, 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 let me tell you something. I think that the voice of God might be speaking to me. He tells me certain things that I should or should not do. Because, see, the crate challenge, y'all know, is that people are walking up the crate. Now, Brother Breon, do you think I should do it? Okay, he said, no, why? Let me ask you why. Huh? Okay, let me talk about it like this. Should I have a young person, you know, a little bit, mm, okay, y'all want to go there? I'm going to go there with you. A lighter than I am. <laughs> uh-huh, to go on this crate challenge. Because if you go on the crate challenge, the objective is that I'm going to end up standing right here. Y'all ask me why. It's a crate challenge, okay? I don't know why. That's what they're doing, okay? Now, many of you have, may not have heard of a crate challenge. The crate challenge is that folks will take the time out and walk up. And, you know, if you had some comrades that was, um, I'm going to say, a little bit more risky, and they were my buddies, they would say, uh, Ribbon, I can hear him listening and talking to some Ribbon, you going to do it. I said, I see life. Health, strength, peace, transformation up here, uh, growing in the Lord, studying his word down there. I see, I, see, I see a lot of things I might need to consider. Will you consider it with me for a moment, please? To get there, I've got to climb it, right? That means I've got to be persistent. I've got to keep on trying. Uh-huh. Now, well, maybe... Maybe what I'm talking about is not taking the challenge on this end. How about that, young people? Maybe I'm going to take it from this end, Pastor. How about that? He said, whatever you want to do. I do pray that Pastor's not telling me to climb up this thing and hurt myself. Because did you know that people are breaking arms and legs? They're in the hospital. They're doing damage to their bodies. They're hurting their heads because of a crate challenge. Now, I know many of us are thinking, not at my house. But let me just share, try this on. You see, when you've been in college, <laughs> I just remember one incident we did. It wasn't, my parents weren't there, you know, because I was free at last, free at last. There was an independence in my spirit. It wasn't a crate challenge, but we were throwing hot water out the window. You never did anything what I'll call just stupid. But let me tell you something. We had so much fun that night, but was it right? No. And because some people can get hurt on things like this. Some of us young people make a bad decision. Do you hear that? Minister Stafford, did you hear that? Uh, Minister Stafford. Yeah, 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 yeah. A Do crate this. challenge. Not that. Mm. Do this, not that. Don't follow what I believe. Follow what God would have me to do. Keep my eye on the Lord. That even when my parents are not around. And I'm not talking about just when we are little people. Mm -mm. I'm talking about especially for starters right now. They tell me something's going on even at A&T right now. That's North Carolina A&T. I would not be surprised if it's not going on up the street. All right? Now, these are the things you may not hear about, but that our young people are involved in. <laughs> when you're in college, your challenges are great. You have to make up your own mind whether or not you're even going to class. Do this, not that. You hang out, especially on the weekend. 
And you may not go to the library. You might not even study. But my challenge to you is that even as I look at this crates, is that what would please God? Am I preparing myself for the degree that I want? Am I doing everything possible to get to my goal? I know, I know. I am a boomer and I'm stuck over there trying to print in like I never did anything, but I did throw water out that window. Hot water, because you turn it on and let it keep on running. And you grab a bucket of water and you throw it out that window and that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right whether I'm old or whether I'm young. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right when we make bad decisions, but it's our choice. Because remember, the first thing about faith was about understanding. The other one was about seeing. Because when I see this pyramid of crates, I think I could do that. I think I should be able to climb up Especially if you're trying to give me some money. You know, come on now, let me just be real. If, if the boys start at the frat house, honey, let me tell you, the things that go on at frat houses are not to be played with. Everybody wants to be in a fraternity. Everybody wants to be in the sorority. But at the frat, frat house, they do crazy. And shall I call it cray-cray? Don't be cray-cray. Young people, don't be cray-cray. Don't do that. Be obedient to God, even when your parents are not looking, even when your parents are not there. And young people who are in the yard, you know how we play in the yard? Your mama in the house, and you know your mama taking a nap. Bless God, that's what I do. What happening? They're having a good time. Let's just try it. Let me tell you the disclaimer right now. We are encouraging every youth of Oak Grove Baptist Church Every youth who may happen to see this video, not, and I repeat to you, not, do not try this challenge. Do not. Whenever you see a crate from now on, I want you to re recall that you should not. I will not. I will not take the challenge. I will do my homework when I'm told because I will take that challenge to do what God has called me to do. I will take the challenge to do those things that are right. I will take the challenge of going to work on time. I will take the challenge to do what God has called me to do. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good, but I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And, and, and every once in a while, I have to say to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I love you. I don't want any hurt harm, or danger to come your way. Obey me, and I will provide for you. Yes, protect you, guide you. I need you to listen to me. Obey my word. Yes, trust me. Trust the Lord your God. Be like Simon. Why? Because I, the Lord your God, says so. If God has spoken, will you be obedient to God? That's a hard lesson for everybody to be obedient to God in all things. If he said, love your enemies, what are we going to do? I'm going to work on loving my enemies. Okay, I'm just, I just, I just, I just gotta tell y'all that sometimes, sometimes it's easier said than done. When I'm having confrontations with others from now on, I will spend time with the Lord asking him to help me respond the way he wants me to respond. That, 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 that everything I do, I have to base it on what he would want me to do. That I will remember that faith is obedience when I don't understand. Faith is believing when I don't see it. And faith is an obedience 
because there's a choice that I must make. I want to choose to live my life today God's way. I want to choose, not just me up here, I'm talking about you, okay? Will you choose to live according to God's will? Young people, I do ask if you will, could you stand up a minute for me? If you would just stand right where you are. Just stand up, just stand up, yeah, just stand up. Okay, now we're good, we're good, okay. Okay, just stand up, let me see. Now, now, now young people, for me, it's any age from 24 um, down, okay? For 24 years old and, and younger, not Sister Gladys, bless God. All righty then. Okay, now, now what am I going to do now is that I want to make sure that we do one last thing according to what the Bible has taught us on today. Not because of me. You're being obedient to your parents because of God. You're being obedient to God because he tells us what to do. We have seen what happened with Simon, right? Where he did it his way and it didn't work out. But when he did it God's way, he got an abundance. More abundantly is how we want to live. Okay, is everybody standing? Okay, can you repeat after me? I am. Why? Just repeat after me. Just say it, Just say it okay? Why? Because God says so. Okay? Did you say because God said so? I didn't hear you. I am strong. I am beautiful. I am fearless. I am smart. I am wise. Why? Because God says so. So everything we have just said as, a, as an affirmation, it's not because of what you think or your friends think. It's because God says so. When you don't think you can do the math homework, you can do the math homework because God has given you wisdom. God will help you do that. If you study, he will provide you the opportunity to recall all that you've put in. But you do have to study, okay? Okay, I pray that you will remember that you're beautiful. I don't care if you're short, tall, wide, skinny, thin, whatever. You're still beautiful because God created you. Are you going to tell God that you made a mistake here? You don't do this. That's not God. Is that God? God has given you what he wants you to have. And you've got purpose, young man. You've got purpose in your life. Now, your purpose is not my purpose. God has given you your own purpose, okay? And you're smart. You know, I'm ble I bless God because you're so smart. Pastor Watkins, look at all the smart people you got in no growth. Amen. And, and parents, grandparents, lead, leaders of all the ministries, especially the youth ministry, look what God is doing in this house. Amen. It's going to be a blessing because who said so? Because God says so. So whatever goes on, you're going to live life to the fullest because God says, so I'm going to go and do my homework this evening if I haven't finished it because, and I'm going to do that because I know it's going to help me do better, okay? Because I have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And believe it or not, that's what the Bible says. So if God has told you that he's got a plan for you and, and you're at school thinking, why, 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 why? And why is my mama always telling me to do this, that, and the other thing? Let me just share with you real, a, a little secret. Even when you're my age, a boomer, parents still tell you what to do. Okay? And they're telling us things. And parents doesn't have to be in your own house. It could be your elder. It could be your Sunday school teacher. It could be your teacher at school. It could be a police officer. It could be the fire department. They're doing it for your well-being. They have delegated authority. They have authority to tell you these kinds of things. I want you to be encouraged. Do not take the crate challenge. Why? Because you have a better challenge. Your better challenge will take you where you need to be. Amen? Amen. You may be seated, but I do want to ask... Wait,
wait a minute, while you're standing, let me ask you this. I got one other question. Let me tell you how you can depend, how you can have victory in all things. That's okay, sit down. You can have victory in all things. Guess why? You can't have it just because you want it. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You see, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, guess what he'll do? He'll guide you and keep you in all your ways. You know, all you have to say then is whisper a quick prayer. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes long. It could be, Lord, help me. There are situations where all you need to say is, Lord, help me. Sometimes you don't get the lower part. You just get the help me part. Okay? And God is there for you. But you got to let him be Lord of your life. You've got to accept Jesus. Y'all understand what I'm saying? As your Lord and Savior. So if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, let's whisper a quick prayer. Most gracious and everlasting Father, we come to you today, Lord God, saying, Lord, we want to be your children. Because we're your children, Lord God, we know we can cast our net into the deep and that we will have a return that's more abundantly, that we can live a healthy and great life according to your will. We can do all things through you who strengthens us, Lord God. We thank you for blessing the youth of Oak Grove. We thank you for blessing the parents, the grandparents, those who lead our young people. We thank you for the youth who have chosen to sing praises unto you, Lord God. Bless them in a mighty way. Lord, help us to see all that you would have us to do. We pray right now that if anybody in this house doesn't know Jesus, that's from the little people to the big people, that they too will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior on today. This is your time. This is your turn. Lord God, give them holy boldness to come forth to be received by their own pastor. Lord God, we thank you right now and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's okay. You can take that challenge right now. You can take that challenge because Pastor Watkins is coming forth to receive you. Pastor Watkins is right there to help you to understand all that you have need of in the house of the Lord. Pastor Watkins will lead us, guide us, even when we are a little bigger than ourselves. Sometimes we just need somebody to lead us according to the way that God wants us to go. So if you're not sure, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Come forth. Come forth. You stand on your feet, if you will. Everybody stand on your feet. And receive our own pastor who will receive anybody. If you need somebody to walk with you, let me tell you. Young people, Minister Stafford is right here. If you just wave your hand a little bit, he will walk with you. Because God wants you to be saved. He wants you to be able to say, I'm doing it because God said so. I am wonderfully made. I am all that God has called me to be. Because God has said so. And I trust God with whatever I do, whenever I'm around, whatever I must see, that the Lord will be with me. If there's a storm that should rise, Lord God, and I don't know what to do in the school, if there's COVID coming our way, Lord God, if the kids are infected in my classroom, cover me with Jesus. Protect our children. Let them not go, Lord God. They won't have to go and walk into the path of danger and unseen dangers, Lord God. We pray that our children will come forth right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you. And I praise you right now, Lord God, that your children will be about your business. It's in Jesus' name. We just keep on praying. Amen. Let's give God praise for Reverend Henrietta Clements. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why? Because the, the Lord said so. Uh, we, are, we are obviously open the doors of the church. If you are here today and you would like to come forward, we invite you to please come. We want you to come and know the Lord Jesus and let the Lord Jesus set you free. If there's anybody who would like to come, please do so now.
You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come under Christian experience. Or you can come through Watch Care. If anybody here today would like to come, please do so right now. And for those in Facebook, if you want to know more about uh, the church or you need a, you have a prayer request, make sure you call this number 704-455-2763. Anybody would like to come today, please come just as you are without one plea. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise once again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Clements, for that demonstration, for making it clear to us that we must always uh, obey, trust, and obey the Lord. Uh, just a couple of things, and we're getting ready to do the prayer and the benediction. Can we just thank God and celebrate this inspirational choir? Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So proud of you all. So glad to hear you. They did an outstanding job. But let me just say this. I know I saw some other young people. Uh, please make sure you uh, find out when the next rehearsal and come and be a part of this inspirational choir. We would love to have you. Give God praise once again for them. Certainly, we thank God for our music staff, our minister of music, our bass, and our, and our drummer. Give God praise, amen. For our ushers and greeters, for our sound, for our security, for our nurses. You know what, man? We are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. We ought to give God praise. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I do want to say welcome again. I know we're at the end of the service, but if there's anyone here in the sanctuary today, this is your first time uh, or second time, we want you to stand. We just want to recognize you and, and applaud you today. Give God praise. Thank you for coming to Oak Grove Baptist. Thank you so much. My brother, thank you so much. Please come back and see us once again. We'd love to have you come again. Amen. To all of those in, in Facebook land and all of those who are teleconference, we are happy to have you come. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to recognize a new member who has uh, joined Oak Grove Baptist Church, and I have a, we have a certificate that we give out, really so that we can recognize that new member and that we all can know her name. And that person that i like to have come forward is Jessica Ladea. Amen. Jessica, let me put my mask on. to you for being a member of Oak Grove Baptist Church. We are so glad that the Lord has led you to be here at Oak Grove Baptist Church. And guess what? Today you're going to have a little talk with your pastor and first lady, okay? So thankful to have you here. Uh, give God praise again for Jessica. And can you help me celebrate because she didn't wait a long time to get involved. She's involved right now. She's right here, right here with the Inspirational Choir. Thank you so much. What a great, what a great uh, example that you have set. All right, well, we're ready now to close out. It's good to see everybody here today. Uh, we ask you now, would you please stand as we prepare to leave uh, this place, but never, ever leave his presence. Thank you again for Reverend Clements. Thank you for all of our, amen, amen, our, our fourth, our fifth Sunday services, our youth Sundays, and then we also do a, if there's a fourth Sunday in that, month that is also our youth Sunday. We thank God again, but let us prepare ourselves to close out this worship. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your name. We thank you, God, for your word. It, it, it is your word that we get in our heart that we may not sin against thee. God, help us to be obedient to your word. Help us to be, uh, to be, to shama your word, to listen to your word. God, and then let us adjust our lives to line up with your word. We know, God, you're going to bless us. And so we ask blessings right now. Be upon all of those that are in the sanctuary, those who are in Facebook, connected through Facebook, those who are teleconference. God, we know that you know what we're going through. Yes, there are a lot of things going on. We heard about, again, the hurricane that's headed towards New Orleans. We know about the families that have lost uh, loved ones who was over in uh, Afghanistan. 
God, there are so many things happening. We know what's going on with our schools, and so many people are questioning what I should do as far as a mask or not mask. But God, we are calling on your name today. Because here's the reality, God. We have no one but you. And we hear you saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. We're humbling ourselves today. Touch every situation. Touch every family, God. Touch every person in that family, God. Give them strength. Give them the obedience that they need to walk through and keep on moving forward. Now, God, we love you. We thank you. We ask your blessing be upon those who may be going through a medical procedure, maybe those who are even have COVID-19. We pray for healing right now because you are a mighty God. Now, God, we just want you to know that we love you, we adore you, and we magnify your name. Now, unto him who's able to keep you falling, from falling, present you your presence in, in the presence of the Lord. To the only wise God, our Savior, glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say Let the church say